Sometimes I say composite, sometimes I say composite. <laughs> that is a Sega Genesis and a Sega CD being powered off of one power adapter. All right, we're back with some more consoles out. In part one of that video, I mentioned that you may need a polarity reverser. And I also mentioned several times to double check the polarity. That wasn't just for you. Like, that wasn't, uh, you know, you're an idiot and you're going to fuck it up. That was for me. <laughs> because I made a mistake and I fucked it up. I uh, thought that the Sega Genesis, uh, and therefore Sega Master System, and Japanese Super Famicom, uh, were polarity positive uh, center pin. And... Um, I was wrong, it turned out they were <laughs> they were a negative center pin. So if there was any confusion in part one, it's it doesn't the NES run an AC. Um the NES like power adapter outputs AC, but the NES doesn't actually use AC. The first thing the NES does when that power comes in is it rectifies it to DC. Um so I've been using um a Sega Genesis 9 volt DC power adapter um, on my NES for like 10 or more years, maybe like 12 years now, uh, and it's been fine. So there's no issues there. You can definitely use a DC power adapter on the NES. Keep in mind where maybe the worry comes from is the other way around. So for example, you can use a DC power adapter on the NES, but you have to be really careful not to use the NES AC adapter on anything else. So you can use the Sega Genesis power adapter on the NES, and that's going to be just fine. But if you use the NES power adapter on the Genesis, you're going to pop the Genesis. <laughs> or the Master System. Or the Super Famicom. Um, again, as far as polarity goes, on the DC side, most of these systems are actually center pin negative. It's the opposite of um, what most modern electronics are. So when I ordered this cable, I thought it was fine that it was positive uh, center pin. Um, now in the long run, it probably doesn't really matter because obviously this cable is not super common. It's not super easy to find. Most of the ones that I would find would probably be DC center positive anyways. And then once I have this adapter, this just goes on here and it reverses the polarity. So this is center pin positive. Now it's center pin negative. These actually came from Amazon and they were shipped and sold by Amazon.ca. Um, um, so these were free shipping and arrived within a couple of days. The reason it says musical instrument accessories is because a lot of guitar, a lot of guitar effect pedals are minus or negative uh, center pin polarity it makes it a little harder to find a power adapter when it's center pin negative because again most stuff today is center pin positive despite the fact all these consoles in front of me <laughs> except for the NES are center pin negative um so yeah these are popular with uh guitar players um to uh, adapt their pedals to so so I ordered two of these as well, so I kind of have a pair, which actually is going to come in handy for the end of this video, because I'm going to try and run the Sega Genesis and the Sega CD off that adapter. So again, with this on here, we could actually, in theory, we should be able to plug this into every single one of these systems here, even the NES, and uh, it should just work. So let's try that. All right, so... No tricks here. This is <laughs> this is the only thing here. Um, again, Type C plugged into here. I'm gonna grab the Genesis here, pop that in, and we got power. Probably no surprise then that Sega Master System is gonna work. Plug that in there. Turn it on. And we got power. 
I'm going to turn this light off for a second, just so you can see that easier. We've got power. All righty. The Super Famicom. Well, geez, we're way overexposed for that, aren't we? <laughs> and I'll turn the light off again. So the Super Famicom, we've got power. We will take a look at the video output on the Super Famicom. We're also going to take a look at the Sega Genesis. Again, we're going to try and get that to work with the Sega CD. And the NES. Again, we still have the polarity adapter on there. I'll plug that in the NES. And we've got power. So with the NES, it doesn't matter if we have this polarity adapter on there or not. If we feed it center pin positive, it's going to work. But for these other systems, without this adapter on the end of it, that wouldn't turn on. I'm not going to plug them in because I, I don't know if it, if it would pop any diodes or fuses. I'm not 100% sure. I would say it's not safe and avoid doing it if you don't have to. But if I plug this in here, the Super Famicom is not going to turn on anyways. So we need this on there for these other three systems. So yeah, I think we'll take a quick look at the Super Famicom. Um, we'll see how its video looks. Um, the Super Famicom, or the Super Nintendo in particular, is actually the one console where when I used a cheap aftermarket third-party um, power adapter, this actually, I don't know if it's the exact same one, but very, very similar to this one I showed on Amazon. You can see it has the 5.5 millimeter barrel plug that would run this, the Sega Genesis, or in this case, the Super Famicom. But it also has that, I don't know exactly what it is, 7 millimeter with a pin in the middle, the weird power adapter that the North American Super Nintendo uses. And I bought that, and in, immediately on a Super Nintendo, I noticed the rolling lines through the video. Alrighty, so that is the Super Famicom. And that is, again, that's running directly off of the Type-C. As far as the video goes, again, well, in this case, it's S-Video. Uh, S-Video running to the RetroTink. But yeah, I figured Donkey Kong Country 2, um, a nice, bright, colorful game. And there's no noise, there's no rolling lines, there's no interference, so nothing that shouldn't be uh, in that video. It's, it looks good. It looks as good as uh, one would expect. So there you go, the Super Famicom. We're now going to try running a Sega Genesis and a Sega CD at the same time through... The magic of buying two of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't necessarily buy two of them in the thought of this. Um, I think, ultimately, a barrel plug splitter would actually be better. And in theory, you can get a three-way splitter. You should be able to do the Genesis, the Sega CD, and the 32X all at the same time. It's more of a have two in case one breaks, and it's more of a I bought two because, again... It's an $8 cable, and the shipping costs $16, so it's like, you might as well just buy two of them, and just have them shipped together. But anyways, let's try that out. Alright, I guess just to show this, we got the two Type-C's coming out of here. These both have the polarity adapters on there. Doesn't matter which one goes to which, and they're both 9 volts DC. One into the Genesis. Alright, so, one power, one, one power adapter, here it goes, yep, heard the Sega CD come on, and there's the Sega CD BIOS. is just composite 
I actually just hooked it up mono because I just had that cable here from the NES, but just composite mono going into the retro tink. And again, there's no, I mean, other than the com composite, sometimes I say composite, sometimes I say composite. <laughs> I'll never get over that, sorry. The composite, the composite, <laughs> coming off the Genesis never looks amazing. But there's no, again, there's no extra noise in the signal. There's no rolling lines or anything like that. So again, that is a Sega Genesis and a Sega CD. The light on there. That is a Sega Genesis and a Sega CD being powered off of one power adapter. And it's half the size of the Sega Genesis power adapter. <laughs> So that is pretty dang cool.